the first Sunday of Lent. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for forty days and forty nights. Angels came and ministered to him. Jesus started the season of Lent by going out into the desert. Forty days, he prayed, he fasted, he shared himself with us. He gave the greatest almsgiving there is to give. (laughs) Something he would prove to us in three years at Calvary. And so 2,000 years later, in 2022, or 2023, (laughs) whoops, ooh, I think I spit. We also take now that same journey for ourselves, but with him. We take seriously and choose, as he did, to participate in those three great disciplines or pillars of Lent, prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Now, a few days ago on Ash Wednesday, I shared with you some of the tweaks and the changes in our God Minute prayer to align more closely with the spirit of Lent and and penitence, included that nightly bedtime prayer. So that's done. Today, for a few moments here, I'd like to share with you about our fasting and almsgiving. Fasting. Most of you are familiar with giving up something for Lent, something we enjoy, you know, as a kind of a sacrifice. You know, chocolate, uh, wine, smoking, Starbucks, Netflix, whatever it is. And that's great. But friends, we're inviting you this season of Lent to give up something not that you enjoy, but something you don't. (laughs) something that you want to be rid of in your life, namely sin. I say, enjoy the dark chocolate bars, enjoy that pint of Ben and Jerry's, and let's focus instead on our energy, our spirit, on giving up and being rid of what keeps us from Jesus. Not giving up what makes life enjoyable, but what diminishes our life, right? Let's give that up. And that thing we call Christians, no, not that we, I mean, we Christians, we call sin. (laughs) So friends, each Tuesday, starting this coming week, Father Michael is going to offer a video reflection on a particular and common sin that many of us struggle with in our lives, and then offer suggestions and some creative ideas to help overcome them, to rid ourselves of them, to give them up, if you will. So each week, a new sin that we will fast from and work towards giving up. We're calling it the Word Lenten Conference. So this Tuesday, our first word, first sin that we're going to tackle, patience. (laughs) Or more specifically, how do we get it? It's probably the most common source of sin that people confess and struggle with in their lives, that we as priests hear in the confessional, the lack of patience. We're going to fast from it together this week, friends. Well, starting this week and then throughout. We'll send you an email with the link to the video of Father Michael opening that up for us. It'll also be on our app and our uh, blog and website. So stay tuned for that. That comes this Tuesday, our first fast. Let's move to that third pillar, almsgiving. Almsgiving has been around for thousands of years and is referred to as charity, philanthropy, giving to the poor. 
It's a primary way as Christians that we express our faith and put into action the golden rule, love your neighbor as yourself. That said, giving to the poor, it's not about just giving handouts. I mean, it is that, but it's more than that. It's about sharing one's blessings with those who are less fortunate than ourselves. And that, my friends, is the beauty of this spiritual practice of almsgiving. It helps us recognize and be more aware of how <laughs> amazingly blessed we are. Almsgiving helps us see more clearly what a beautiful and amazing life that I've been given. And like any gift given by God, well, it's meant to be shared. So, how? This Lent, how is it going to work? You got two ways to give alms this Lent at the God Minute to help the poor in our common Lenten charity. You can choose one or choose both. Me, I'm doing both. The first option, traditional almsgiving, where you make a thoughtful donation to help the poor in a common charity. So this year, our common charity are Vincentian seminarians who serve the poor in the slums of Africa at our mission there in Nairobi, while also helping them in their studies to become priests. So it's so practical, we don't even think about it, but they need a vehicle to get to these places, to do the work of God and to study to become priests. And by the grace of God, friends, we're going to make that happen for them. And if we reach that goal, we got a second charity closer to home to help renovate a soup kitchen and shelter serving the poor in San Antonio. My classmate, Father Kevin, is the pastor. So anyway, good projects that we'll be tackling together. Again, how? The first option it's a traditional almsgiving where you can send a donation through check or credit card or payment apps like Venmo, PayPal, whatever. You mark it as almsgiving, and then when it comes to us, we put it towards our common charity this Lent. But anyway, the link to donate through credit card or all that stuff, it's on our website and our app blog. I'll put it down below. Second way. To give alms is what we're calling not alms giving but alms sharing. <laughs> and I love this. It's a way to spread your alms giving throughout the 40 days of Lent, not just a one or two time thing, but 40 days by sharing a treasure of a different sort, your blessings. <laughs> That whenever you realize how blessed you are in your life, on any particular day, maybe your family, the friends that you enjoy, a, a good glass of wine, financial security, a bed to sleep in, laughter, <laughs> my dog, a comfortable couch, whatever it is, you share a piece of that blessing with those less fortunate. That's alms sharing. Your blessing becomes blessing for another. <laughs> How? Here's the fun part. <laughs> you decide on a dollar amount for your alm as we start Lent. Think of it as a coin, an alms coin that is worth whatever you decide. So $3, $5, $7, whatever. I'm choosing $3 for myself. Each coin, each ohm will represent a blessing in your life. And then whenever you become aware of a blessing, that brings joy to your life, that puts a smile on your face, that warms your heart. You donate that alms coin 
towards helping those less fortunate in our almsgiving charity. <laughs> and over the course of our 40 days, those little coins, those little blessings that fill your life will literally become blessing for others whose life is far poorer. And friends, technology makes this all possible. You can do this sharing of your coin through any of the financial apps that we talked about previously, Venmo, PayPal, Cash, whatever. Or new this year, you can simply text it to us, the text to give. Again, the information is on our website, an app blog, <laughs> really easy. You basically text the word alms to our God Minute number. And after the initial setup, the one-time setup with your credit card and the dollar amount that you're going to choose, your coin amount, again, me, it was $3, but whatever. Then moving forward, anytime you text alms to our God Minute number, that coin will automatically get deposited into our charity this Lent. You don't have to put how much or anything. You just alms, send, done. Super easy and actually kind of fun. <laughs> so you're enjoying that double tall caramel mocha at Starbucks? Wonderful. Pass it on. As you're sipping it, grab your phone and text or Venmo alms to us. And boom, you just shared a part of that enjoyment with someone who really needs it. Feeling blessed with your puppy or your kitty cat that gives you love and companionship? How wonderful is that? Well, share a little of it. Share a little of that love by grabbing your phone as your dog is licking your face and texting alms. And that little coin of $3 or 7 or whatever you chose is going to go right to those who can't afford a dog who would love to receive that kind of love and will in blessing. Or like me yesterday, <clears throat> I went trail running, <clears throat> excuse me, through the woods on a 70 degree day in February in St. Louis, unheard of. <clears throat> it was warm, blue sky, birds chirping. And as I'm running through the woods, I'm just thinking, I hate running. Why am I doing this? <laughs> no, but I am I'm feeling I'm feeling blessed, overwhelmed. Like God, this is awesome. And I literally stopped. I pulled out my phone and I texted alms. And in two seconds, my little three dollar coin was helping the poor. Because I just thought. Why should I be the only one who is feeling so blessed at this moment? Pass it on. And then I was back to running. <laughs> anyway, folks, you get the idea. Use our text to go feature or Venmo or PayPal or Cash App, whatever. And let's pass along our blessings as treasure in the moment you're enjoying them while running, in the grocery store, curled up on the couch with a glass of wine, whenever, whatever, you feel blessed, pass it on. And the reason I like this alms sharing, in addition to the traditional alms giving, is that it's something spiritual that might happen every day during Lent, or multiple times during every day during Lent. It's a great way to not only help others, but become more aware of and thankful for the many blessings that God has given me and you. And it's a beautiful way to say thank you. So that's it, folks. Our alms giving and our alms sharing this Lent. I'm doing both. I wish I could give more, but I already gave $225 as my almsgiving already through credit card. That's my one-month allowance that I get as a priest. I'm giving that. 
And then I've designated my alms sharing coin as $3 in my text to give account. And then throughout these next 40 days of Lent, I'm hoping to pass on my blessings as I encounter them in my life and together help reach our almsgiving goal. So friends, I hope you might join me. Thank you for joining me today for prayer, our fasting, and our almsgiving, almsharing pillars that will take us through a best Lent ever. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's do this together. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.